Welcome back, guys. This is our third live stream. Happy Saturday to everybody. Hello. So we've got three viewers. Hell yeah. Welcome, guys. Thank you for taking time out of your day to uh, come and watch this live stream. We're going to be doing some fun stuff today. So um, over this week, well, first of all, I'll talk about what we've done the last few live streams. So what we've done the last few live streams is we've modeled our boxing ring and we've textured our boxing ring. And then we brought the ring into Unreal Engine, textured it all in there, set up all the textures, made sure it all looked nice under the lighting. And I think everyone had the consensus that we were pretty happy with how it looked. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Hello, hello. But yeah, so we are going to be cleaning up motion capture today. So earlier this week, um, I got in my Rococo motion capture suit. Shout out to Rococo. Um, it's only through their suits that this uh, short film is possible. So I've been recording the motion capture for that and also been recording the facial motion capture because today we are going to be cleaning up and processing motion capture for the humanoid characters. I said in a earlier stream, I think it was in the first stream, I might have said it, but this film is going to open with a kind of sequence of some humanoid characters in a changing room and then from there it will then go into the fight and so we need to obviously with humanoid characters they're going to be showing their faces it's not like the robots right the robots in the boxing fight we just have to worry about the body but with the humanoid characters we have to worry about facial capture so we're going to be doing a mix of the two cleaning it up processing it i'm going to show you how i process all of it and then from there we are going to start setting up some of the shots and yeah i'm gonna try and keep it a bit concise today probably go a little over an hour something like that i know i said that last time and we ended up going over two hours but yeah it should be fun i think we're gonna have a good time if you're new here hello this is the channel samster so basically what i do on this channel is i make short films um using both unreal engine and blender or any software really that i can get my hands on I make short films about your favorite franchises, but I also make original stories here and there as well. And then I create behind the scenes videos showing you how I made them. I also am live streaming every single Saturday, 3 p.m. BST time in England. And like I keep saying, if there's another time that maybe works better for everyone, let me know. I'm sure we can figure something out. But yeah, that's uh, that's the plan for today. That's what we're going to be doing today. It's going to be a lot of fun. This has been a pretty crazy week guys two huge things have happened this week so number one and probably more and more crazy and i'll quickly screen share for this but we hit 2000 subscribers let's go that's insane thank you everyone that has subscribed genuinely it's insane that we've hit 2000 subscribers like my mind is blown the fact that that many people have watched my content and enjoyed it enough to subscribe thank you thank you for being here it's been really awesome seeing this community grow seeing this channel grow and i'm excited to see where it goes right I, I'm, I'm only going to be making more right we've got these live streams we've got the short films we've got the behind the scenes and then i'm also clipping up these live streams and posting them daily so you guys have little bite-sized bits that are more palatable than watching a two-hour live stream but yeah seriously guys thank you you so much for subscribing if you haven't already subscribed hey why not you know consider doing it you know we we make some pretty cool content here we're having fun i think this is going to be um a really awesome film that you guys are going to enjoy and then future films as well we've got so much i've got so much that i want to create for you guys and then the second thing which was pretty shocking was i got into the top 100 for clint's new render challenge kinetic rush you can see it here like what is happening bro i got the two founders of corridor digital and one of my favorite vfx artists of all time who used to work at corridor and now has his own channel where he has these huge render challenges right thousands of people enter and they thought my render was good enough to get me into the top 100 it's insane yeah it doesn't really feel real i was here's the funny thing right i was 110 percent fully expecting to not see my render in there i was like look i think it was either the night before or the night before the night before i just went on instagram and 
and I scrolled through a ton of different renders that people had made. I searched hashtag kinetic rush challenge and just started watching a bunch of the different renders people had made. I saw so many and I was like, oh, these are all so much better than mine. Mine doesn't stand a chance. So I kind of just went in going, well, I'll see some awesome renders. Like I'm excited to see the top 100. I've seen everyone's work in process, but I hadn't seen any finals. And so I was just like, hey, I'm just going to watch this and enjoy the top 100, right? Mine's not going to be in there. And then all of a sudden... <laughs> mine pops up on the screen and they're saying Samster and they're complimenting the work and yeah it was crazy um really awesome and um yeah so Clint Nico Sam thank you so much for considering my render to be good enough to be in the top 100 it was awesome to get your feedback and compliments it meant the world and I'm really excited to see the top 100 render compilation that will be coming out I think it's next Saturday that will be coming out and then I believe yeah there you go man never give up you got to keep going get back up and keep moving forward and um they've got their the top 100 will be coming out next Saturday and then I believe it's the following Saturday the all submission which will be a couple hours long but it'll be every render people made and I'm really excited for that as well to see everyone's because there was from all the ones I saw there was definitely more than a hundred renders that deserve to be in top 100 but like you know it's these competitions it's you have to pick a top 100 right you can't you can't go well we'll make it 101 this time around it, you, you have to make it top 100 so there's a ton that didn't make it into the top 100 that are incredible and they sh should all be so proud so I'm really excited to see it all in the um all renders thing if you haven't already seen my submission, there is a link in the description of this video. You can click on it. It's labeled the Kinetic Rush and it goes to my breakdown of my render. I made a little cinematic as well to play before the final submission, just to add a bit more narrative, make it a bit more cool and uh, cinematic. So consider going and watching that, liking it, whatever. Anyway, I've yapped on for long enough. So today we are in Unreal Engine right and so today the main things that we are going to be doing is we're going to be making this guy this guy and this uh, uh not guy <laughs> uh this girl come to life right the motion capture is recorded facial mo uh, motion capture is recorded which like i said shout out to rococo this was only possible through them the suits the head rig that they have is what made this possible and we're going to be bringing these characters to life so it's going to be really fun i'm going to show you guys the process you're going to be able to see the raw motion capture and then you're going to also see how we clean it up and you're also going to see the process of doing the facial capture let's do the body capture first so let's go in here and this is our motion capture so this is our motion capture so we've got our coach we've got a manager and we've got a promoter so if i click on it double click so see here this is the Unreal Engine 5 just base skeleton. And this is what our motion capture is put onto. And you can obviously see there's some weird uh, clipping going on there. Feet aren't making contact. The arms are kind of clipping through the legs. They're not far apart, right? So things like that. And this is all stuff we're going to clean up. But this is our base animation ready to go. So what we have to do is we have to put it on these people, right? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it Sequence. And then we're going to create a folder called Changing Room. It's really important, guys, that we organize everything. It can get, especially in a software like like unreal where i mean you can see the the ui is not like i love unreal engine but the, the ui is not the best designed right it's very word heavy not always easy to navigate so it's really important that you label everything accordingly organize everything accordingly inside your project file so nothing gets confusing because otherwise you're just going to be looking around going uh where is this so you want to label everything so remember before and then here we're going to right click go to cinematics and we're going to create a level c sequence and we're going to call it uh changing room opening and so we're going to have multiple different sequences and these are where all our animations will be and this will be for different shots and we're going to label them all accordingly and then also put a number so that i can come into this project file at any time and i can look at the number and go okay what is the order of these shots because you don't want to get that wrong and then end up rendering something in the wrong order and then yeah it can just get very tedious right so here we go we're inside but we obviously don't have a camera right there's nothing playing so we need to give it a camera but first we're going to change this to 24 frames per second the reason why we change it to 24 frames per second is because that is typical for film and tv with video games you would more be 30 or 60 but 24 frames per second gives that filmic look 
So we're going to hit track and we're going to go here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type in camera. We've got two cameras here. Yes. There we go. So we've got our camera here, right? There's our camera. And if we want to snap into the view to look through the camera, just click this. Look at that. And look through our camera. There's Adam. There's the coach. But we don't have to worry about the location of the camera just yet. We've got to get our animations in. And then once our animations are set up and the blocking is set up, then we start setting up the cameras. But we want to make sure everything else is right first. And that's what today is about. So we've got our coach. So we're going to hit track. And the reason I've selected him is because when, um, if I don't select him, I have to scroll through and try and find him. But if you click on the thing you want to add in and you hit track, go to actor to sequence, look, it's right there at the top. So I can just click on it. All right, there you go. This is our MetaHuman with our rig, right? And this is the rig that we can, we can move him around, right? We can go in here and we can do that. I can move the facial rig around and he dynamically does that in real time. And he looks really photo real, right? I just think that's awesome. Anyway, this is what we're gonna do. We are not hand animating. So we don't need this stuff. So I'm going to delete the rig and I'm going to delete the facial rig because we don't need them right now because we are using motion capture hand animating. If you want to go down that trail, go for it. I hate hand animation though. So we're going to go body animation and then I'm going to search coach. Huh, why doesn't coach appear? Well, that's because something very bizarre, which I don't know why this is standard in Unreal. This is what's quite frustrating is... For some reason, metahumans aren't automatically told, hey, any animations that are using the Unreal Engine 5 skeletal rig, you can use them. For some reason, it doesn't. I don't know why. Maybe someone in chat or someone watching this after the live will know. I don't understand why, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> it is a pain. And so for some reason, you have to do this. I'm gonna come into your body of your metahuman here. This is our metahuman. And you have to go here and you have to double click the skeletal mesh and then you come here to metahuman base skeleton you click on that and you go like oh mate look at this what is this what is that look at him he looks terrifying his legs are clipping through what's going on i always find it so funny how this happens and he's got like no facial hair or anything it looks kind of terrifying but yeah <laughs> whatever i guess moving on <laughs> We're in here now, and we basically have to now tell Unreal, you can use Unreal Engine 5 skeletal rigs. So I have to go to Windows, Asset Details, then hit this plus, and then here we search SK underscore mannequin. And this is the Unreal Engine 5 mannequin. Hit save, close this all out now. The body, animation. Oh, and look at that. Right at the top, coach, changing room, body. So I can click on it. There you go. You got a mocap, but what's he doing over here? Why is he... What's going on? He's, why is he over here? He should be over there. Why is he over here? This is so confusing. What? But it's okay. But where's, where's the rig guys? Where's the rig? I can't see the rig anywhere, right? It's disappeared. Well, it's okay. So here we do, here we do. This is what we're gonna do. You come here to your body, you click on the body, you right click, and it says bake to control rig. So you go here and you go metahuman underscore control rig. I hit this and just some stuff comes up, but you just hit create. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to bake that animation, the raw animation onto the control rig. And then from there, we can add additional animations on top to clean up things like the shoulders, the hands clipping through each other. Maybe foot placement isn't right. Maybe there's too much swaying. I know there's this weird thing happening right now with Rococo where when you try and record a walking cycle and you use the foot locks, for some reason it causes this weird like up and down, up and down, up and down kind of movement, which is kind of frustrating and you have to go in and clean it up manually. Hopefully they fix it soon. But if you don't use the foot locks, you don't have that problem. But then obviously without the foot locks, it starts to like slip and slide all over the place. So, so now look, look at that. Now he's got the rig. So now we come down here and we go additive. Now let's go to the bit where he's sitting down. Okay, so that's where he's sitting. So let's move him over. We want him to be basically tinkering. The whole point is like he's he's tinkering, he's working on Atom, he's cleaning up his, I don't know, whatever, but that's a good question. So does the data from the mocap suit usually always need some adjustments? 100%, no matter, like, no matter what motion capture suit you get, you are always gonna be doing this. You're always going to be cleaning stuff up. There's like, and some of that comes down to interference when you're recording, but some of it also comes down to 
the proportions of your character they're not the same as you it's it's kind of funny when when you ask someone who doesn't like know anything about the film world and like let's say Gollum for example that's probably one of the most famous examples or, or like Planet of the Apes and stuff that people think oh well they're in a motion capture suit so you just take that data click drag and drop it right and then it's just on your character it's like no no every single shot you have ever seen where the director or the vfx supervisor says mocap was used an animator worked on it it's never just raw because raw motion capture there is there's always problems always we're, we're just like even the most advanced motion capture out there the most expensive motion capture out there like avatar the most recent avatar has a lot of cleanup so much cleanup so yeah it's just part of the process see see how it looks like it looks like he's tinkering on him now it looks like he's like working on atom so i like that i like how it looks so that's but obviously <laughs> right now he's levitating that's not right so we're gonna take this and we're going to put it here and scale it scale it down there we go he's a bit caked up isn't he sorry that was a bit sus that's better and this is this is the other side of it guys it's just the tediousness of it very interesting i wonder if it will ever get to a point where they can perfect it yeah i think it will and i i know there's a lot of controversy around ai but i think that's going to be what does it i think what it will be is you'll have the motion capture suit and it will it will record and then as it's being recorded an ai will be fixing anything in like real time i think that will probably be the next step there's already a software called cascada which is an ai assisted animation software and it's used predominantly i've seen people use it predominantly for cleanup of motion capture because they record their motion capture and then they bring it into cascada and cascada is able to fix anything in terms of like foot placement momentum it's able to add all these secondary motions into your animation so that it feels more realistic so hey do you think real steel 2 is coming out anytime soon do you mean my my real steel if you're talking about the real steel 2 that i'm making yes hopefully hopefully soon we're working on the motion capture today and then really at that point it's just rendering out shots and adding sound design the fight's all choreographed this week we are recording all of the fighting and then we'll get to cleaning that up i am not going to be showing any of the fighting choreography on stream just because it would be a spoiler and i want you guys to be able to watch it and really enjoy it it's just i have to juggle doing this the channel and then also doing freelance because i, I don't make money off this channel yet okay i make maybe like a couple pence or if you're in america a couple cents per video like i don't really make anything and even then youtube has this thing where you have to make a minimum amount in order to actually receive money so i haven't even received any money yet because i haven't reached the minimum so i don't make money off this channel i do it just because i love it and so when i go through times where i need to focus on making some money i just i have to so that's why it's taking longer because i'm having to take time to do freelance to make a bit of money on the side and just try and stay afloat financially until this channel is big enough that this can be what i make money from and then i can really crank up the content right and i can make things a lot quicker i love this film i loved real steel when i was a kid i loved it and i'm very passionate about uh boxing myself i've had a couple boxing fights i've been training boxing since i was 18 years old i'm 23 now to be fair about a year and a half of that was locked down so i didn't really get any better in that year and a half so it's not a pure five years experience but i really love the sport I'm really passionate about the sport and so that's why I loved the Real Steel movie and I was like hey I go on YouTube there's not a lot of Real Steel short films out there and I'm like what if I applied what I know about Unreal Engine and VFX and filmmaking and was able to make something pretty cool so this is what I'm doing here trying to just make something for the fans to enjoy really that's the aim here it's it's not like actually linked to the plot of real steel 2 it's just real steel 2 because it's the second real steel short film i've made but i think you guys are going to really enjoy it the the fight is based off an, of a actual fight that happened a couple years ago it's a well-known fight um in the heavyweight division because it was very back and forth it was a proper war very exciting i watched it live and i was on the edge of my seat the whole time well i wasn't even on the edge of my seat i was jumping up and down it was so crazy and back and forth you thought one second one guy was going to win the other second someone else was going to win so well hey you know it'd be pretty awesome if he saw it <laughs>
<laughs> it would be pretty insane, actually. You know? Maybe if it maybe if it gets enough hype and people share the video around and comment and like and subscribe and stuff, maybe it gets enough hype and he sees it. But I'm just doing it because I I love VFX, I love filmmaking, I love boxing, and I really enjoy the real steel film. Right, I watched it a lot as a kid, and so I'm just doing it because I love it. I love telling stories, and that is why this channel exists. I love telling stories, and I want to make some stories for you guys using visual effects. So, speaking of telling stories, we've got our motion capture. I'm happy with it. Obviously, we need to clean up stuff, right? There's clipping. I don't know, but last time I checked, arms and hands don't do this. Arms don't phase through your legs and do this weird stuff, right? And also, another problem. Where's the facial capture? It's just kind of staring creepily, right? Well, we've done our facial capture. It's here. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to come into content, metahumans, metahuman animator, and we're going to create, we're going to come into metahuman animator, metahuman performance. Sorry, guys. Here we go. So we're going to come in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to come here to our footage. This is our footage. And when you come in here and you select your footage, you've got coach changing room facial. All right. Well, I guess that's it. So I'm going to click on it. And hey, look, it's me looking like an absolute crazy person. Let me move my camera. <laughs> oh, mate. Looks a bit weird, doesn't it? But yeah, there I am, guys. And it's a bit weird because see here, right? The camera doesn't move because it's attached to the front of the head rig. So it just does this really weird thing. So it looks terrifying. It's not very humbling. Well, no, sorry. It is very humbling. It's not very complimentary. If you want to get humbled, do some facial capture. It'll get right up in your noggin. So we've got a facial capture here. But in order to create this facial capture to be realistic to then put it onto our character, meta, um, meta human animator is what we're going to be being meta human animator is what we're going to use and what we need to do is we need to create a meta human identity that then that unreal engine can use as the base it has to know what i look like yeah exactly the ones with the infrared make you look even worse because yeah exactly it makes you look like a, a demon no it's awful so it's it's you know it's not as bad as those ones they're pretty terrifying but then but anyway basically what we have to do is we have to create a metahuman identity. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna create an identity, and we're gonna call it Samster ID, because that's me. We're gonna come in here. This is probably the most tedious bit, but this is why I wanted to focus on this stuff and show you guys how we make it, because it is quite cool seeing how without any track, because you'll notice in that footage, right? There's no tracking markers. There's no markers on my face. And that's because MetaHuman Animator uses the front-facing camera of your iPhone, and it also uses the depth pass camera on your iPhone. So you know how now there's like facial ID to unlock your phone? It's not just using the normal camera. It's also using the, the depth pass to actually understand the structure of your face. And so it uses those two combined to create really realistic facial animation without needing any facial trackers. So this is what we have to do. We have to create component from footage and then we got facial calibration and i look even worse in this one get ready because i've parted my hair so that you can see my face we're going to teach metahuman animator what my face looks like and then from there it's going to be able to look at the facial capture data and combine them. so here we go oh look how terrifying i look <laughs> oh no it's not it's yeah yeah, it's not very uh, complimentary, is it? But I will have, I will say this. My hairline is strong. I just got a big head. Chef's kiss. Exactly, guys. It's, that's what you want. That's, that, that's what I walk around like. But anyway, here we go. So we're going to go here. We're going to, uh, we're just going to select the body, but it just needs something to base it off of. Then we're going to go to neutral pose. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to click this. And what this does is it's going to promote a frame, or you can come up here and you can click promote frame. So current promoted frame will be set as front view. Okay. That's going to do it. And look at that. It has, it's pretty cool. It's understood where my eye is. It's understood where the eyebrow is. Got the wolf cut. No, exactly, bro. No, no, no offense. No, don't worry about it. None taken. The eyebrows tracked. It's even got this tracked. It's got the lips tracked. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? And that's just from, and it understands. It's like, okay, cool. So now it understands this. Great. But it doesn't, it needs more than just this. It needs me looking slightly to the right and it needs me looking slightly to the left so this is what we're going to do we're going to click this so we can move around again and we're going to move to a part of the footage where i am looking off to the right and we're going to hit promote frame again and look it's done it again and it understands now it understands the perspective oh that's an eye there that's the eyebrow there so now i'm giving it depth to understand perfect now we do it again 
promote frame oh yeah look at that it's so cool look and it now understands all these different ones right so now it understands okay this is what he looks like looking at the camera this is what he looks like to the right this is what he looks like to the left so now it has an understanding of my face it understands depth so now that it's done that we hit metahuman identity solve and this is where it's gonna go okay using this data i want you to create a metahuman head that resembles me so that it can create everything. So we hit MetaHuman Identity Solve. It's gonna take a second. So now check this out, guys. This is really cool. Look at that. That's my head. And then that's my MetaHuman. And look, it's matched. It's even it's even understood that this is a beard and that my chin kind of starts there. It's even understood that. It's not been confused by the beard. But look how accurate it is. See, look how accurate that is. That is so cool. I, I just find that so cool. I find it so insane that it can do that. So now that we got this, we're going to hit mesh to metahuman. Skeletal mesh and full metahuman. So we click that and what it's gonna do now is it's going to generate an entire body of a metahuman. And that's why you have to make sure that you select a body and select a height. And it's going to create an entire metahuman based off of this head mesh now it's going to create a body the head and this is just so that it understands okay this is a metahuman we've got a metahuman that looks like this and it's going to rig it effectively right and then we're almost done so it's done the mesh to metahuman right so now from here we want to add a pose because we're not done we now need to let it know what our teeth look like so we're going to go add pose add teeth Okay, and here we're gonna scrub through it and we're gonna find the frame where I show my teeth. There we go. We're gonna promote frame. Oh yeah. And look at that. Understands the lips, the teeth, where the eyes are, the eyebrows, understands it all. It's so cool. Now, I've been told that keeping these lower two ones on create a bit of a weird glitch. So what I often do is I come over here and I go tooth lower and I turn it off. It will warn you, but don't worry. Even the guys at Unreal Engine do this. They turn off the lower ones. I I think it's just safe so there you go that's it all so we've now got neutral pose looking to the left looking to the right and we've got our teeth pose so it's now got everything it needs to create the meta human which we'll then use for our facial animation so now that that's all done i will save thank you bro thank you sanjeev kumar for subscription welcome 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 to the community right, hang on let me hit pre prepare for performance and then because it's it's going to take a second basically what it's going to do now is it's going to use all those frames that we promoted and it's going to generate a head rig which we can then use with the facial mocap and it's going to be able to generate some pretty realistic looking facial capture and it's very quick it doesn't take forever it's pretty quick but yeah i said earlier that thank you for everyone that subscribed because we hit 2000 subscribers which is just insane like i can't i can't wrap my head around that the fact that we're at 2k now right and it's only been a year right i started this channel a year ago where i posted the trailer for dark world which is a really big project that i'm working on and i'm still working on it um me and my best mate daniel we are rewriting the script currently because the trailer got so much attention we weren't expecting that like my channel had like 20 subscribers and i posted the dark world trailer and it's got like 700 000 views people loved it and i was like wow but what's funny is i look back on it and i kind of cringe because i'm like there's a lot that's wrong with it i've improved so much since i made that trailer the environments for dark world are looking awesome but yeah we're working on the script on of that and um we just want to make it worth your time so that was a year ago that was august last year and then a year later we've hit 2,000 subscribers so thank you everyone that has subscribed this is so awesome that this community is growing it's so awesome to have you guys all here we've got nine viewers in the house what up everyone hello hello welcome everyone to the live stream but yeah welcome guys welcome it's awesome to have you all here yo what up your kinetic rush submission was fire congrats on top 100 do i need an iphone to do this facial mocap for this specific type of mocap that we're doing yes metahuman animator basically requires a depth pass that's so as long as you have an iphone that does face id so if your iphone when you try and unlock it if there's an option where you can use face id you'll be able to use it for because i'm using the live link face app that's the app that i'm using because it doesn't just you it's not like an ar kit where it's not just using the video footage and trying to figure out where my eyes are and where my eyebrows are it's using a depth pass so it's actually understanding the geometry of my face and how the geometry of my face is changing 
changing as I'm expressing, as I'm talking, as I'm looking around. And it creates really high fidelity and high quality facial capture. There are ways that you can use Android. I believe Rococo has released a new head rig that allows you to use Android. I think they've done some updates to their Rococo facial animation that allows you to use it, which is pretty awesome because if you don't have an iPhone, that's that's still great. It's still great for MetaHuman, but you might just have to do a bit more cleanup on the facial mocap side of things. Whereas with MetaHuman Animator, there's less requirements when it comes to cleanup just because it does capture so much. I'll show you guys one of my more recent projects where I used MetaHuman. If you haven't watched it, I recommend you guys going and watching called Deja Vu. And this is MetaHuman, right? So you got this MetaHuman and it's me. And then I've had to go in, <laughs> a creepy face, yeah. Jump scare warning, guys. <laughs> but um, you'll notice there's so high fidelity, right? It's crazy how high fidelity it is. And I'm barely doing any cleanup. It's that good. Like I'm adding a subtle exaggeration in his eyebrows. I, I find that the eyebrows is the bit that doesn't come through as much. So I, I had to kind of push it up a bit more. Yes, dark picture games. Yes. Well, that that I've had a lot of people say it reminds them of that. And it yeah, it has got that vibe to it. But like there's a lot. So I like essentially had to push the eyebrows in and then push them up. So he looks a bit more concerned because that wasn't coming through. There was also times where the lip movement didn't work. And that's just typically down to me having a beard. I find that MetaHuman Animator works the best with like no facial hair because it sometimes thinks the facial hair is your lip. It thinks you're pushing your lip out. And so it sometimes does that and it looks very weird. And so you have to go in and fix that. But I didn't run into too many problems with this. I mean, it like it worked pretty well. And so this is like, this is similar quality to what we're aiming for with with Real Steel 2. Um, and I've learned things since here with facial capture. Like I, I've learned a lot of ways to make it look better, make the characters move better, make the, the eyes, because the eyes are the window to the soul. So I'm trying to add like those little specular highlights you see. Like one of the first things I did is I literally just got my phone in front of my face and I just did a performance. And what's really awesome is that if you do it free range like that, where you just have your phone in front of your face and it's not on a head rig, it can register neck movement. It can register head movement. So you can like record yourself doing a monologue from like a favorite film or something. And then you can put a camera in front and just make sure it's recording from here up. And you'll have the facial movement and the neck movement and you've got a whole performance. You don't even need a motion capture suit and you've got a whole sick ass performance. So there's a there's a lot of cool ways to use MetaHuman Animator to, to use the Live Link face app. So I really recommend it. It is only it, it's only good for MetaHumans. That is the only problem. So if you have characters that aren't MetaHumans, you're gonna want to use something like the Rococo facial capture that uses blend shapes, and that's really good as well. And it's affordable. It's not like some crazy stupid price. So I recommend checking them out for that stuff. I have a handlebar mustache, so I might throw it out. <laughs> yeah, well. I would, do you know what? I would be interested. I would genuinely be interested if you were to do it and just experiment and just see what happens. It would be really funny to see if it does like push the lip out because it mistakens your, your mustache for the lip. That would be interesting. I would want to actually see an experiment of that. That would be really funny. If you guys are brand new to MetaHuman Animator, check out these guys, Bad Decision Studio. They are an awesome channel. I really recommend them. They have so many tutorials and this is how I learned MetaHuman Animator, okay? I learned MetaHuman Animator through their tutorials. So they have one here, which is awesome. That shows you how to work at MetaHuman Animator. They have MetaHuman Identity. So it will teach you how to actually make a MetaHuman that looks just like you through a head scan. It shows you how to make custom textures, shows you how to even customize it even further to make a character that doesn't even resemble a MetaHuman and looks like Darth Maul. Really awesome stuff, guys. Oh, are we done? It's finished, guys. Let's go. Dubs in the chat. Finally done. So we can close it out. And look at that. We've got our metahuman prepare for performance and look at that spitting image isn't it dude it's insane how much free knowledge is online genuinely all right it all i'm gonna have the guy look it'll hovering above my head but we we'll just do this do we look alike i feel like it looks pretty similar doesn't it pretty cool but genuinely i did a three-year course called digital arts to learn visual effects two years out of the three were ruined by covid for me i i only was able to enjoy term one of first year and then i lost i lost all 
we had COVID and everything, but I did a three year course on digital arts, right? I learned more in the year after I graduated through watching YouTube videos than I did in the three years I spent at university. I learned more just off watching YouTube videos going, oh, I wonder how you do that. Searching YouTube, how to do this in Blender, how to do this in Unreal Engine, enter. Boom, 20 videos that show step by step and you just get to learn it. Crazy. There's so much free knowledge out there. Do not underestimate the amount that you can learn off YouTube, guys. If you want to learn something, we are in such a blessed time. If you want to learn something, you can learn it. Your only limit is your own procrastination, your own hard work, your own work ethic. That is your limit. If you if you just put in the work, you can learn anything when it comes to this stuff. It, it's all there readily available on YouTube. Everything I know right now, I learned from YouTube. I learned from watching YouTube videos, so I really recommend it. But yeah, let's do this, guys. This is going to be fun. So we got that now. So we can come back, right? Oh, we've had to do all of that. So we've come back here, meta human identity, and we click Samster ID. So now we've got our facial animation, got our facial animation, and we've got the rig, right? So we have to scroll to head movement here. This is the last thing we have to do before we hit process. So head movement mode. You don't want this to be transform track. You want to put it on control rig, okay? I don't know why. I was just always told and I'm too afraid to do it the other way. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm honest here on this channel. I don't know why, but I've been told that it's a bit messy when you do it the other way. So this this is what I do and it makes sure that it attaches to the mocap. So we've got this all ready. Now, you might have noticed right here at the beginning, my mouth is open here. And you're like, why is your mouth open? It's because because we're recording our facial mocap and our body mocap separately right my body mocap i'm using the rococo gear and that's you can see it right here i'm i'm going right into the rococo studio but then the facial capture is being recorded on my phone which is like this far away from my face right but i need to make sure that they link up properly if i don't time them up properly it's going to look very weird it's the first thing that gives it away and this is why i really recommend that you record your facial capture at the same time that you record your body capture because your face and like where your eyes look your eyes never glide your eyes always are lock 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 right and so that has to parent perfectly with the, the body performance. And if it doesn't, you notice because the eyes will glide when the head does this and it just looks strange. So that closing my mouth, I close my mouth at the same time that I clap. So then when we come in later into sequence, I can sync up the body mocap where it claps and sync up the facial data when my mouth closes. And then I know that for the rest of the animation, facial and the body are synced perfectly and I never have to touch it again. It's the easiest, simplest way. I really recommend that you do it. It just, it's the best. So we're going to hit process. So now it's going to go through the entire facial recording and it's going to do two passes. The first pass, which is what it's doing right now, is it's, it's looking at the video. It's it's looking at the 3D model and it's making a guess. Okay, he's pulling this expression, kind of looks like he's pulling this. And so it goes in here and it tries to estimate, right? And that's the first pass. Once it's done that, it's gonna go and do it again, but it's gonna use the, the depth pass. So it's doing the video pass right now, and then it's gonna do the depth pass. And the depth pass is where all the detail comes in, all the micro expressions, all the little squints of the eye, the, the raise of the eyebrow, the twitch of the lip. All the really subtle nuances that really make a character feel real, those come through in the depth pass. But it's going to do this for the entire thing. Then we're going to bring it into sequencer. Then we're going to clean up stuff because there's probably going to be some bits that where, where he's shocked or he's happy or he's frustrated. We want to exaggerate those emotions just a little more, right? And emphasis on just, right? We don't want to do it too much because you know there's that classic when someone's doing facial capture, they overperform so that the sensors pick up on their facial movement. You see that a lot in the like until dawn and stuff like that where their facial expressions are a bit bit over the top and that's not what we're going for. We're going for subtle nuances. That's the that's the goal here. Goal is to get these short films consistently looking like the cinematic trailers you see for video games. That's what I want to reach. I want to reach that quality, the cinematic trailers that you see for video games. And I'm at I'm at good video game level right now. So I'm just below the cinematic look. I feel like I'm I'm at this is a look this looks like a good looking video game. That's the, that's the level of quality I'm at right now. And I just need to keep pushing myself to reach that next level and I think that's where stuff will elevate. But if I was to add, exaggerate the facial expressions too much, it would go right back down to looking like a video game. So 
we want to keep things subtle and realistic and things like cinematography and lighting that's going to be key yeah me and my brother are going to be recording the, the body mocap for all the robots so we're going to be doing that this week we've choreographed the fight we have it all ready to go we just need to record it it's gonna be fun we're gonna work on some behind the scenes footage for you guys and we're gonna post that on my instagram we're gonna post it on tiktok and we're gonna post it on youtube shorts so if you're not following me on any of those things consider you know following me socials are in the description links are in the description my instagram my tiktok I believe my twitter but i never i never go on twitter or x whatever you call it i never go on there i said i went into a rant last time but just Holly hollywood is just in such a state right now it's an absolute mess like i i i lost my job at ilm i didn't even get to start my job right i got hired i got a flat i was like a week away from moving in and then i got fired because of the strikes and it's an absolute state hollywood is in an absolute state right now and they don't listen to the fans and i want this channel to be somewhere where the fans have a voice where you guys can go hey i'd love it if you made this type of film i love this type of video game or oh, i love this type of franchise could you make a short film about it and i'm like yeah sure i'll put it on the roster i'll put it on the on the planner yeah man it sucks but it is what it is you know it's I, i've come to terms with it that i'm not getting that job back because they told me that I was going to get the job back and then they just, <laughs> they never rehired me. So it's the film industry. It's cold. It's a cold world, guys. <laughs> the VFX industry still hasn't recovered from the strikes still to this day. There's people still being fired. Like I know people at ILM that are still being fired today. A year after the strikes, they are getting fired because not enough work is coming in. And it's because of the billionaires. There's the billionaires at the top of the food chain. They want to keep making their billions and they don't care how many people they have to fire in order to ensure they keep making their billions. So people like me, we just get kicked off. It's just like, oh, he hasn't even started yet. Let's just boot him. They did that with so many people. Yeah, it's horrible, but it's the industry, right? It's what the industry has become. So that's why I think we need to put the power back in the indie creators. The indie creators are the ones that are passionate, the creatives who want to create. Hollywood is no longer ran by creative people. Hollywood is ran by uncreative business people who are only thinking about profit. And when you have people like that running a creative industry, you get endless remakes, endless reboots, and endless franchises where there's no end it's no longer beginning middle and end it's beginning middle and it's a beginning again and a middle and then a beginning again and then an end of the beginning again like and it's just this endless treadmill that's kind of like brain rot so i want this channel to be somewhere where originality comes back and you guys have a say in what we make and you feel like your voice is heard and all these different things man I, I, you know so i'm just using the, the frustration i have about losing that job and everything uh, i'm just using f that as fuel and um getting into the top 100 of um clint's most recent render challenge that was really awesome that that built a lot of confidence in myself because i i had no confidence before that i'll be honest mate i had absolutely zero confidence that i was going to be in the top 100 so it was i was and i was starting to doubt i was like am i even good at this stuff should i just quit but it's really reassuring to see that someone as skilled as Clint and people as skilled as Nico and Sam, they saw it and were like, yeah, this is worthy of being in the top 100. It was very heartwarming and gave me some confidence back. So felt good, <laughs> felt good. Got this Real Steel 2 and then we got Last of Us, which I'm going to call We Few Survivors. It's going to be about a character traveling across a state in America, trying to get back to his safe house and he has to overcome different challenges like clickers runners raiders spores bloaters different things like that it's gonna be fun and it's all gonna be along to some music so there's not really gonna be much talking it's just gonna be one of those really cool visual storytelling pieces and look at that it's done voila et voila okay so so this is what we're gonna do see here we've got export animation or we've got export level sequence now we could just export the animation but the problem with exporting the animation is then we just get it raw and that's not what we want okay we want to be able to edit it we also want to put it on the metahuman that we're going to be using so this is what we're going to do we're going to hit export level sequence so it's just going to create that for us there we go that's terrifying okay so it's it you never get used to it man you never get used to looking at a metahuman that looks like you it's always so bizarre i'm just setting up some lighting so it nice okay sweet and look how cool this is watch look how good that looks and that's using an iphone guys like wrap your heads around that i'm this is iphone footage there's no tracking markers it's no crazy rig 
Yeah, you look... Yeah, no, honestly, the weird yeah. colors. But yeah, yeah, that's me. Look how insane that looks. Purely just on an animation level. Look, it's even capturing the little corner smile I do where my, my mouth, one side goes up. It's so accurate. It's insane. So impressive. And it's what I love about MetaHuman. But our MetaHuman doesn't look like this, right? So we need to change it. So we go here, we select our mesh, and then we go skeletal mesh asset. And this is what we do. We search coach. It's so crazy, man. So this is the rig for... And look, watch. So now the same motion capture that we were just looking at is applied here. Pretty crazy. It looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Now, obviously, because the face looks different, there's some nuances that don't come through. And this is where cleanup. Play. So like here, see, it's a little muted. So this is where we can add some additional animation. And this is the awesome thing. So because look, I can come in and see how I can I can play around with it. It's pretty awesome. So we're gonna put a keyframe there so it stays the same. And then keyframe there and there, keyframe there, and then just subtly bring it up a bit. You know what I mean? And a bit more of a squint in the eye. So that's a bit of a subtle nuance there with very subtle there see how the eye kind of squints up gonna keyframe there and this is why it's really important to have this here because it's perfect reference right it allows me to understand where emotion has been so let's do a bit of a very subtle again that already looks better i'm gonna put another keyframe here that looks better that looks way better squints his eyes again just adds a uh, you know, when it comes to smiling, a, a genuine smile, your eyes squint, right? You get these little, right here, you get these little things coming in here. So you want to make sure that you do that. So that's what we're doing. That's all we're doing. You are a hidden gem, man. Wish you so interesting to listen to you look at your work in same short films, by the way. Keep it up. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Just working hard, man. Trying to get some recognition, you know. And, um, you know, it's been a steady growth. I started this channel. And we've been at it for a year now. And we're at 2,000. 2,000 subscribers in a year? Like, thank you. Thank you to all of you. Because that's that's down to you guys, right? I provide the content, but it's you guys who are deciding to click on it and enjoy it. So I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time. And thank you for taking the time being here. See how he looks genuinely happy, though. Oh, so we're going to do the same. <laughs> And it, it is it is tedious, right? <laughs> People are like, oh, really? This is you're gonna be doing this the whole time? But listen, 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 listen. It pays off. Okay. If the character looks super real, but then the facial animation doesn't look really high fidelity, it's gonna look weird. So I've got to got to make the facial animation look as good as possible. Looking pretty good. I, I don't mind actually how his mouth is moving. See, it's it's capturing it pretty well. It looks pretty good. I don't like this is it his jaw it might be his jaw doing it i don't i don't want him doing this i don't want that so keyframe there keyframe there and then there and there and the reason why i'm doing the keyframes first is because if i was to just move it and then keyframe it it would apply it to the rest of the animation and then i would have to like try and readjust and it's just tedious because i want it to go back to normal here it's only here to here that I want to close his jaw. That looks way better. What do you do for voices of other characters? Assume you're voicing the main guy. Yeah, so I, yeah, I'm voicing the main guy and then I'm using a voice changer for the promoter and the manager. And it's just because I don't have the budget to hire actors right now, you know? So I just have to do it myself. I did acting for like 10 years. So like you can notice here, I'm putting on an American accent. It's not the best American accent, I'll be honest, but my dad's American. So I, I'm surrounded by that accent all the time. So it helps a lot with practicing but as this channel grows though i want to i do want to start bringing on actors and stuff because i want this to be somewhere where i can i can pay people and provide some jobs because it's it's tough out there you know i actually don't like the corner of his mouth don't like how it does that actually i feel like it should stop there there we go that's better i think we'll leave it there because again the focus is the fight and i don't want you guys just to be staring at me doing this the whole time all right i'm happy with that cool happy with that okay so this is done now so this is what we do now so we've got our cleanup let me minimize this we've got a cleanup we've got our normal so we're going to click on 
the ID, this bad boy. And you want to make sure it that the face is the face of the metahuman you're going to be using on. Because it's going to bake the animation on the dimensions of this character. Okay. And then we're going to right click, bake animation sequence. So we hit bake animation. So here we go. So then we're going to just call it coach changing room for facial clean. Just so I know. I know where it is and I know that this is the cleaned up motion capture. This is not the raw motion capture. We're going to hit OK. Export animation sequence. And now it's going to bake down everything into an animation sequence that I can just drop on our meta human. And I'll show you guys what that's looking like because that's going to be pretty cool. We'll show. I'm going to show you guys what this is looking like and then I think we'll, we'll wrap up there. So you'll notice we've got our clap. So I come down here, face. Add an animation. Oh, look, it's right there. Coach changing. And it's like, oh no, where'd his head go? That's not right. What's going on? It's okay. Click on face, click on all. And then right here, you tick disable post process. And then you keyframe the animation mode. Then you go to the body and you hit disable post process. And you keyframe the animation of the body. Okay. Looks a bit weird there, but okay. So that's where the clap is. So now we need to sync this up. So I'm going to, this can be a bit tedious sometimes, but. So it needs to be a bit faster, a bit slower. There we go. And let's see what this looks like as he comes out, as he stands up. Let's see what this animation and facial capture together. So he's working on Atom. And they approach. And he's like, yeah, that's me. Oh, looks good. I like all the, the wrinkles that you can see. Obviously, the lighting is going to be improved massively shot by shot. But he looks happy. The emotion is better communicated. Yeah, looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Pretty happy with that. Yeah. Now, obviously, as you can see, there's, there's some weird stuff going on. So this is, we'll do this very quickly. We'll just fix this stuff. And this is, this should be helpful for you guys. But this is typically things that I do to my metahumans to make them look a little better. So first off, the arms are too close. So we're going to turn on this. So it snaps the 10 degree. We're not doing it by the world origin. We're doing it by the actual origin. So we're going to Raise that one keyframe. We're going to turn on our automatic keyframes as well. Turn on that one. And then we're going to bring the shoulders one, two keyframe. One, two. Here we are. You're just, I mean, his arms are a bit weird right now, but we'll, looks a bit like a penguin. See how much better that looks now? See how much better his shoulders look and just more natural his movement now looks compared to before? Yeah, it looks pretty good. So his arms look a little better. We'll just clean this up as well. Might as well. Huge difference. Yeah, exactly helps a ton so now we're going to go in and we're just going to fix the collisions of this stuff so that looks better already looks better again this is where it gets really exciting guys making this stuff because you really start to see it come through and see it come to life and it's it's very exciting that's better isn't it and it won't always be in shot so it doesn't matter about everything being perfect but the facial animation looks good i feel like i can emotionally connect to this character the movement looks good i like the wrinkles wrinkles really help with metahumans because when you have characters that are too young their skin can start to look a little too smooth and so it can start to look like they're made out of plastic so wrinkles and stuff help immensely with adding realism so he's looking pretty good pretty happy with that there you go guys that is how you bring a metahuman to life all by yourself pretty cool pretty happy with it thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you for dropping by we had the most yeah, thank you bro really impressive work for one afternoon i appreciate it man and we're not done yet we still got the other two metahumans to do right um but i'll do that in my own time because otherwise this live stream would be going on for 12 hours probably <laughs> Well, maybe not that, but who knows? Because once again, I tried to do a one hour stream and we've gone over two hours. C'est la vie. That is how it is. Can't help myself, guys. I love VFX. I love filmmaking. Can't pull myself away from the computer. But I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Hope you had some fun. And uh, yeah, this live stream will be up for anyone that wants to rewatch it. Thank you for everyone that came in to watch it live. I think we had the most people watching live ever. And it's our third live stream. So it's really exciting. I love watching this community grow. I've got big plans for this channel and I've got big plans for us all to do stuff together and for this to really be a cool place where the love of filmmaking can be shown and it's no longer about money. It's no longer about clicks. It's just about telling a good story. That's what this channel's about. And thank you 
for taking time to join me with this live stream. I will be live next Saturday, the exact same time. We will be working more on the arena. We will be doing more with motion capture, adding in the crowd, going crazy, cheering for the fighters, cheering for the boxers. It's gonna be really fun. I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. I might even show some teasers with the motion capture for the fight that we record this week, but I'll see, because I don't want to do spoilers. But anyway, thank you all for joining. Thank you, bro. Yeah. You too. Everyone, have an incredible rest of your Saturday and the rest of your weekend. Until next Saturday, guys. In a bit, lads.